Hello and welcome back to, well, it's not quite Kenji Land. <laughs> a creative copy of Kenji Land, where we're taking a look at where I am building my new base today. Now, I duplicated the world as it was before any changes were made, just so you can have a look around here. What started off here was just a regular village, but what's going to be here when we're done is so much more. I needed to start a new area because, well, our boardwalk area is starting to get a little crowded with people, and I wanted to be able to build some bigger things without getting in anyone's way. And when I was going along the coast, looking for a good area, this just struck me as having so much potential. The bay shape alone to the land here was just inspirational. And I want to build a good entrance for it. This will be the gateway where people come into my area. So we built the uh, the locks that you can see behind my wooden structure here. So that you can come in on a boat. I know in Minecraft they're probably flying in on Elytra or coming through a portal, but... That's not what it's designed for. It's designed so that, you know, if you were coming in here, you would do it by boat and you would get to see it from a certain perspective. And there, as you can see it on the right. So, in order to make this area look decent, I had to give it sort of a harbor vibe. I started off thinking maybe Fisherman's Wharf, and then after a talk with Navi, I started thinking maybe about making it bigger than I intended, and having to widen out the entire entrance area. I also wanted the experience as you were coming up in your boat to be a little grander than just, you know, a watery entrance. So I started creating the stone arches that were going to go over the water. The idea being that, you know, with these over you, it's... It makes you feel smaller as you're going through, right? It makes everything else feel larger. At least, that is the hope I was going for when I started working on this. I used some pictures of the Rito Locks here in Ottawa as inspiration and reference to try to figure out the basic shape for this thing. That said, it's not nearly as medieval as this is, obviously. I got this idea in my head that I wanted to sort of unify the design of this area with my base back on the boardwalk by duplicating the tower, the lighthouse tower that I currently have. And I spent two days painstakingly building that tower again but modifying it to work with this environment, basically making it into a windmill instead of a water wheel at the back and things like that. And then I hated it. I absolutely hated it. <laughs> so the next day I cut the whole thing down and rebuilt it again from scratch. This time I figured I'd go for a wider based building and shorter. But at the same time, I also liked the idea that I'd come up with for the first version, which was the windmill. So I got to work on setting up a brand new structure that would use a windmill to provide power for our steampunk scientists' new area. To keep the connection, though, between the original base and this new one, I still went with the same general palette. That being the cobble and dark oak combination. In general, I think they work well together anyway. It's a nice contrast and a nice look. So, why not, right? <laughs> Next, we had to work on sort of, not the roof, but like the second floor. This is where I was going to eventually be attaching the windmill. And I want it to be more interesting than just a flat structure. And that's why we've got these sort of peaked slash arched uh, entryways, as well as we're going to have a nice copper roof on it, because that brings us back once again to the palette from our original build. Now, I don't know if you've ever built a windmill, but I did, in the end, I believe I did like six of these using creative to try to find the pattern I liked the best, the one that would work the best for the 
the color scheme and for the size. Because making something bigger allows you to add more detail, but then you have to kind of match everything around it. And there are limits to how much you want to do that. In the end, though, I did come up with a design for it that I was reasonably pleased with. I like it. I think that's a very solid build right there. It's unique. It's different. It also starts to give some personality to this area, something I can build off of with the rest of it. Now, some might think with a build like this, you know, maybe this was what I did this episode. Maybe this was it, but no. The most important build is yet to come. Oh, yes. So if there's one thing Kenji Land needs, it is a true and proper monument to our divine cat <laughs> patron. Uh, it's actually a lot of work making a cat. So I grabbed a, a design from someone named uh, Omnivore. It's uh, from Planet Minecraft site, and I'll put it in the chat below. Or <laughs> in the comments below. And his was for a diamond cat. But I felt that if I just did it out of the right colors instead of out of diamond, then I could use it to make a, you know, reasonable cat statue. So I don't know if you've ever tried to make something like realistic, like based on a family friend or a pet or something like that, something you really care about. It's a lot harder than I thought it would be. It's like every little change I made didn't look quite right. Some of them looked downright horrible, and I'm like, this is not cute enough. Kenji is too amazing to be captured by mere wool blocks. But I had to keep trying. In Kenji's case, part of the problem is that he's not really completely symmetrical. Like, he has that... Uh, that white line above his nose that goes down one side and a little brown patch just on one side of his muzzle. Like, how do you capture that with squares and flat surfaces? I couldn't, uh, I couldn't figure it out. Plus, fur is not all one color. It's not all perfectly brown. It's not all black. It's a mix of the two and shadows and that, which at least, at least for that part, wool worked pretty well because it does have that variation. I think if I'd done it out of concrete, I wouldn't be as happy with it. But trying to figure out his pattern and make it recognizable was just <laughs> kind of a nightmare, really. I Don't get me wrong, I enjoyed it. <laughs> so maybe nightmare is the wrong word, but the number of different variations on it I had to try and always stepping back and looking at it to see how it was turning out made it quite the lengthy process. So one breakthrough though was uh, realizing that even though Kenji doesn't have gray on his face, I could use gray to mimic some of the changes in fur texture. And I had some stone on me, so I just used it as a fill-in block and it actually started to look a lot better. That was when I started to have some real hope that maybe, maybe I could do him justice. And that meant a quick trip to Megalina's wool shop, and then on to the body. Now, you can't really tell from the photo, but Kenji's sort of white all over the front, and his back is mostly black and brown, so I had to do a lot of adjusting there. I went through several stacks of wool trying to get him set up properly. And what image of Kenji would be complete without his magnificent raccoon tail? <laughs> it's always one of the first things people comment on when they meet him after they get over the Oh, he's so cute! <laughs> Couldn't leave it out, just couldn't. It had to be part of his uh, design. Though I also ended up making the tail longer because I felt that uh, the one he had on the uh, original design was just, it wasn't powerful and majestic enough for our Kenji effigy. <laughs> and now let's take a peek in creative to see how our statue turned out. 
the dramatic reveal. <laughs> there he is. Now, another breakthrough was deciding to change the basic shape, make it a little more rounded by cutting corners off the head, the back, and making the chest stand out a little more. But I really like the outcome. I mean, obviously he's not perfect, he'll never be as cute as the original, but as monuments go, I think this one's appropriate. <laughs> there we have him, the star of our show. And all of that is just to produce an effect, a view as you're approaching the new area that will set the tone for the builds to come. If you like what we've been up to today and you'd like to see more, please drop a like and a subscribe down in the box below, and I would love to hear any of your comments. In the meantime, I'll see you next time, right back here in Kenji Land. Goodbye.